Good evening, this is the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board and the Harbor Management Commission meeting for Thursday, February 24th, 2022, 7 p.m. And it's a virtual meeting on Zoom. And even though you just got the announcement, this meeting is being recorded and it will be made available later on the town's website for viewing. I'd like to welcome everybody here and introduce our vice chairman, Mike Beasy of the board. Good evening. Um, thank you all the uh, members of the commission. Um, I, I just briefly, before we start, if we could just um, introduce the board members that are on there so you could, um, you can recognize them. I think it looks like the top is, uh, we'll start with you, Tom. I think you're at the top of my square. I am Tom Moll. I'm Suzanne Barton. Good shot, you made it. Who else? Mary's on, right? Uh, yep, Mary Mahar. Yep, Mary Mahar. And I think, are we missing anybody else that's on the board that I can't see? Uh, Kim, Mary, Kim, Kim, yeah, Mary Frazier. It's Mary in the bottom. And Ken Lester's with our town council. He's our liaison on the bottom of my bottom of my box. So that's that's the board members. And from Parks and Rec, obviously, you know, Kathy, um, who else is on from the board? Let's see. Rachel. Hey, in the Rachel, Rachel Mattioli, Recreation Supervisor. And Toby, who wants to join our Zoom meeting tonight, <laughs> the dog. <laughs> and Mary Tebow is on the Assistant Director of Parks and Recreation. Just oh. trying to re rename myself so people can see who I am. <laughs> there you go. Instead of Zoom, there, go. Zoom. Okay. there you go. That's better. Okay, so we'll start in. Uh, in the interest of all all you guests tonight, we've um, we've put you at the uh, top of the agenda. So there's a presentation on uh, Laura's garden at Mikey's place. So I'm not sure who's taking the lead on that. That would be me. Hello, everyone. Good evening. My name is Sherry Labs and I'm the chairperson of the advisory board for Laura's Garden Foundation. Um, we would like to thank all the members of the park board for taking your time tonight to hear our proposal um, for building a community butterfly garden for the people of Wethersfield to enjoy for generations to come. It is our intention to present to you a concept for the garden, a garden we call Laura's Garden. Before we start, however, I would like to acknowledge several members of Laura's family who are on the call tonight her husband, Patrick Hart, down there in that black box, probably he's got the kids running around, <laughs> um, is on the call, as well as Laura's parents, Steve and Martha Kirsch, her siblings, Steve Kirsch, Becky Weaver, and Melissa Albright, and her aunt and uncle, Liz and Najib Habesh. Tonight, you'll hear from the designers of Laura's Garden, Beta Group, who will take you through the concepts and renderings and then Becky, Laura's sister, will explain why we as a committee believe Old Weathersfield would be the perfect place for Laura's garden. And then finally, Najib Habesh will, of Beta will go over the next steps and answer any questions at that time. Before we start with the presentations, we wanted to give you all an idea of who is Laura. Um, Laura Kirsch Hart was a mother, uh, was a 34 year old mother of three who passed away unexpectedly last July. Laura lived her life with a mission of spreading joy and becoming a friend whomever she met. Her love for her family, her friends, her students at Knobloch Elementary School in Glastonbury and her town of Wethersfield was evident to anyone who had the pleasure of crossing her path. Laura's love for all of these things led us to create this nonprofit organization that has a mission to create an inviting space for all members of our community to gather and appreciate the town of Wethersfield and each other. We hope that by people learning more about Laura and her story, that we can encourage everyone who visits the garden to spread joy throughout all aspects of their lives, just as Laura did for all of us who had the pleasure of knowing her. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Randy Collins from Beta to give you guys an idea um, and walk you through the concept of the garden. Thank you. Thanks, Sherry. Kathy, uh, will you allow me to share the screen? Yep, I'm doing that right now. Oh, okay, great, thank you. Hang on, let me, I thought I just did it.
Andy, if, do you have the share screen button on the bottom? Yeah, I do, but it's, it asks me for uh, oh. the host needs to disable it. Okay, I just made you a co-host, so you should be able to go ahead. So, hmm. Let me know when I'm sharing. All set? Excellent. Yes, yep. I have it. Um, thanks again, Sherry. Uh, my name is Randy Collins. I'm a landscape architect uh, with Beta Group. Uh, I've been a landscape architect for over 30 years, and I lead the landscape architectural division at Beta Group. And it is my honor and pleasure to uh, have been asked by the family to assist them in developing this butterfly garden. And what I'd like to do is walk you through uh, the early stages of the design so that we can, you can get a sense of what it is that we're proposing and some details on what it would look like. So what I'm gonna basically do is walk you through the original concept, the Nordic shell concept give you some uh, visualizations of what the preliminary design looks like, speak a little bit about the location um, next to Mikey's place, and then talk a little bit about the maintenance. And um, then we'll round it out with some closing remarks and next steps. So the, when I was first contacted about the design of the garden, I spent about a weekend thinking about, well, I should say after meeting the family, I spent a weekend thinking about what this garden should look like. I knew that it was gonna be a butterfly garden. I knew um, that it was gonna be a special place for the family to gather, but it was also thought to be a community place as well. Um, what that really led me to, and it really was based on the input from the family, was thinking about the shape of a nautis shell. Uh, it has a lot of different symbolisms and is uh, something that is recognized as uh, the golden ratio in math, but that's not, the math part isn't really the, the inspiration. But this slide illustrates some of the features of the Nordisk shell and what it represents, perfection and beauty, strength, spiritual growth, creation and movement. And it really, as I was thinking about it and thinking about what um, the family's discussion about Laura this really seemed like uh, the right place to really ground the concept in. So you can see in this view that they're the Nordisk shell and working from sort of the, the tree, the flowering tree at the top, circling around uh, is uh, where we have the shell, uh, Nordisk shell shape. And you can, see it's a little, it's slightly obscured, but in this section, you can see sort of how that shape works. So in concept and in uh, this preliminary design, I'll go through a couple of the features. We're thinking that this would be a great place to have an enclosure with a berm, probably about 24 to 30 inches tall at its height, that would give a sense of enclosure to the space. And that berm would be planted with various um, shrubs and perennials that primarily would be based on both uh, their ability to attract butterflies, but we're also going to have uh, a couple of other criteria that we're going to use. That criteria criteria will include uh, maintenance, being you know very concerned about making sure that this is a, a garden that can be easily maintained, uh, providing seasonal interest and beauty, uh, being able to have uh, it be a piece of the park that can be uh, a piece that fits in nicely with the park itself and uh, being adjacent to Mikey's place, being able to complement uh, the Mikey's place. And then a few other features include uh, a bench so that you can see sort of in the background, this granite bench, there would be, actually, I'm gonna go back real quick. There would be, here's the bench right here. And you can see there's a wooden inlay in the bench, this monolithic bench that's set into the berm uh, that has a um, area that would inlay for uh, providing three seats. And these would be conceptualized as seats for uh, Laura's children. And then there's a, another bench over here, a little more tucked into the uh, park, uh, excuse me, the garden, 
uh, that would be a, a place that would be a place for um, Laura's husband and the dad of the three children. Also included is this feature, which I will now go to the next slide. And we're thinking of that as a very simple water feature, basically something like, and I'll show you some images in a second, um, a, a monolithic piece of granite that water comes up through the center and bubbles down into uh, a basin area where it gets recirculated. And I'll go into a few more details on that in a second. Also, one of the things we're all thinking about is having a basically a little placard at the entrance of the garden where we can um, have some recognition and a little information about Laura and I'll show you a detail on what that could look like as well. The surface of the hardscape we're envisioning is possibly being bluestone. We really would like that to be something that allows for stormwater to infiltrate through the, um, the, through the joints in the bluestone and into the base. So we don't, so we're dealing with stormwater um, as a result that falls on this within the footprint of the garden itself. Here's yet another image of what it could look like. And another image of what we would envision it to look like as well. Another feature that we're thinking about is illumination. And we want to provide illumination for a number of different reasons. I think primarily because it gives a sense of warmth, warmth and invitedness to the space. And it makes it, especially in the winter months, a place that uh, if you have a 60 degree day or evening in February, you can still go out there and you can sit there and um, the space, though the plants won't be in full bloom, the nature of the layout of the garden, the berm, the benches, the hardscape, really still provides a very inviting place for sitting and reflecting. We envision that uh, the lighting would be integral into that granite bench. So if you could see where the people are sitting, there's a, a, a line, a white line. We're envisioning an LED strip sort of inlaid into the granite bench that would allow for some very subtle illumination. And then we would also look to uplight the, uh, the granite piece that is the feature of the fountain. Uh, obviously won't be functioning in the winter months, but still provide a little bit of a, a, an enhancement and a, uh, another feature of interest for the evening hours. So to the fountain, um, here's a couple of images of what we think it could look like. Uh, as I said, is it's gonna have a, a basically water coming up through the center of the granite and then cascading down the face of the granite uh, piece. Uh, we don't envision that there's going to be any standing water or any pooling water. We think that uh, as conceptualized, we view it as the water goes down the granite and into a area of um, smooth uh, river stones, probably a, like a dark brown or blackish color, and then goes into the basin and gets recirculated. Uh, one of the things that we're going to be making sure of is that the river stone itself is able to be held in place so people can't go and pick up the stones and possibly throw them, um, but still allow the water to go through. Um, so that's a conceptual idea of what we think the fountain could look like. Here's an idea of the bench. So the bottom right image is sort of that monolithic bench. This one's a little more angular, the one that we're looking um, at providing in the garden would be more curvilinear. And the upper photograph gives you a, uh, a sense of what that inlaid wood piece could look like within the granite bench itself. This is the, what it will call the entry placard. Um, we, we want the granite to be integral to and designed in uh, uh, coordination with the granite bench. Um, we envision a, a very simple plaque made of brass attached to the granite. And we're thinking about having something similar to the uh, image in the upper right as part of that placard. So location, um, here's a, a map that gives you an idea of where we're envisioning the uh, location for Laura's garden. 
Uh, it will be adjacent to Mikey's place about where that blue star is. And I'm gonna sort of just zoom in. So here's that portion of the park, Standish Park and Mikey's place. We're envisioning the um, garden would go at about this location. Now, one of the things you might notice is that uh, within that yellow circle is an existing tree, I believe it's a crab apple. Um, we coordinated with the tree warden. Uh, he doesn't have a problem with it being removed and would like to work with us on the replacement tree that we'd be proposing as part of the garden, which um, I told Kathy I'd be very excited about and happy to do. Uh, so that is the rough location of where the garden would go. This would be sort of a little more detail on that. So you can see that green shape is the location of Laura's garden. And this was a happy coincidence of, uh, in the design. When we were looking at the location for the garden, we looked at a number of different areas and we really liked this location. We liked it because of its proximity to uh, Mikey's place. Uh, but when we were thinking about a place next to it, we were thinking about that general location where that yellow circle was. And then when we actually took the plan and laid it on, the contour of the entrance to the garden where the blue stone would meet the, um, the rest of the, the, the park space, it fit in almost exactly to the curb in the path that goes around Mikey's place. We, I'll be honest with you, we made some slight tweaks so that it would fit in perfectly. But when I say slight, they were extremely slight. It really just fit in hand in glove for all intents and purposes. So a couple of the details that we want to also make sure that you're aware of, the illumination and the, the water for the park, we would be tapping into existing facilities within the park. So um, over here is an existing electrical service that we would be tapping into for uh, the powering up both the lights and the fountain. And there's an existing water fountain that we could easily tap off of to provide the water for the uh, recirculating fountain at this location. Uh, I will say that even though this is a very preliminary plan at the stage, we've already started to think through some of the uh, details and what kinds of impacts uh, this construction might have. So for example, uh, putting in trenching to get the water and the electricity from their existing location over to the location of Laura's garden uh, we know we have to be very sensitive to the trees that are there. Uh, a lot of the projects that I do are not just new parks or new public spaces, but they're also rehabbing existing ones. And working around existing trees is something that I'm very familiar with. And developing those details to be sensitive to the root systems, to be able to be proactive about making sure that we care for the health of the existing plant material is something that we would think would be um, very much as part of the overall design. Any questions at this point from anybody? I, I just have one. Can you, what's the material um, that you're gonna use on the, uh, on the ground inside the area there look like? Is it just loose stone? It would be blue stone. We're thinking of it as blue stone pavers. Okay. I'm gonna just go back real quick. So it, Right now, it's generally a blue, bluish gray hint. And so we're thinking of it as a bluestone paver, approximately like a 24 inch by 30 inch bluestone slab, all very uh, rectilinear, um, set on a, a gravel base. And we would joint it such that the water, storm water, could pass through the joints into that gravel base. Okay. Yeah. No, I was just, I, I thought it was bluestone. I was, Concerned with handicap, somebody in a wheelchair being able to get in there if they wanted to. Yeah, no, there, it would be no problem for having people be able to get in off of the asphalt path onto the blue, uh, the bluestone pavers. That's and I, 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 I like the uh, lighting idea. That that that's 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 and, and the fountain certainly. I think that that water features to me. It's this. It's that sense of calmness. I think that's that's an important feature to keep there, personally. So.
so uh, I sort of touched on maintenance at the very beginning. Um, maintenance will be something that we're going to be, we're going to be playing, paying close attention to. Um, so the design itself, the selection of the plant material, which we haven't done at this point, but the design of the plant material, the design of the berms, the paving, the fountain, uh, they're gonna all be uh, very much thought of in the context of maintenance and keeping the maintenance very, uh, very simple. Um, the, the, the general maintenance of the garden, weeding, some watering, uh, things like that would be done by um, the Laura's Garden group, the folks that are talking to us and with you are with us now. But they're like, but they're going to be hiring a landscape contractor to do the, the real detailed work. Um, part of the water feature uh, will be putting in a hose bib so that we can provide the uh, ability to, in some of the drier parts of the summer, be able to water. We are at this point not thinking about irrigation, but we're not ruling it out either. Um, I think the plant material is going to be something that we want to pay close attention to from its long-term survivability, but also being able to be drought resistant. Uh, so we're trying to keep the, the maintenance as simple as possible in that respect. From what uh, we're hoping the town could provide is really what it's providing currently in the area of Mikey's place. You know, the, uh, what you do there now, as far as mowing the grass and uh, anything to do with, um, you know, trash removal and such, we would hope that you would do the same thing at Laura's garden. But as I said, the bulk of the, uh, the maintenance would be done by uh, a private landscape contractor that the, um, the group would be hiring. Randy, if I can just add that an arrangement has already been made with a local uh, landscaping company to, to maintain Laura's garden. I, I, I was gonna bring up that point about uh, drip irrigation or something, because I, I don't know, personally, I, I know we can depend on people to probably water stuff, but nothing worse than, you know, flowers and plants, you know, dying off in the heat of the summer during a drought. So I, I don't know, I, I don't think it's a bad idea to consider some kind of irrigation system there just to be on the safe side. That's just my personal opinion. Yeah, no, I, and it's something that we've been discussing, uh, Mike. You know, the couple of elements that I think will make this slightly different than um, maybe a, a typical garden in a public space is that in creating the berm, the, we'll be able to bring in a, a specialized soil mix that will really be uh, able to do a couple of different things. It'll have a high organic matter, um, which will help hold moisture in the soil, as well as provide nutrients to the plants. Um, it's also going to be such that it, we want it to be able to have it to grow and knit into the berm itself. And the critical time of the of the the moisture for the plants is really going to be during the establishment period. What we're hoping is that the nature of the soil and being able to have a hose there will help be able to get it through that that critical stage. But I think you bring up a good point that um, being able to provide a, a drip irrigation type of arrangement really probably is there mostly for those really dry periods through the middle of the summer. But um, it's something that, like I said, we're still in uh, considering. Any other questions about the design? I mean, we can certainly have questions afterwards because I'm going to move on to uh, to some remarks by uh, Becky. About how big dimensionally, I know there's a visual there, but roughly what are the dimensions? Uh, it's probably about in width, if you're facing it at the entrance left to right, would be about 45 feet or so. And then the depth is really pretty much the depth between the edge of that curve in the walkway and the fence. The, the, the footprint would just about be just to the fence, would leave enough room to walk behind the garden uh, between the fence and the edge of the berm. Thank you. Thanks, Randy. Thanks, Sherry. Thank you to the board. 
Let me see, Randy, are you able to? Um, Is there a particular slide you want me to go to, Becky? No, I am just trying to see my own screen behind your screen. <laughs> okay. I can unshare. I think I'm all set. Can everyone still see me when I do this? <laughs> we can see you. I can see okay. you. So everyone, I'm Becky Weaver. Laura was my baby sister. To know Laura is to appreciate nostalgia and tradition. In fact, when something felt authentic, fun, memorable, Laura could be here heard saying hashtag tradition, which was a coined expression that simply meant, let's do this again. This is probably why she returned to our town to start her own family. She was so proud to be a part of Weathersfield and all it means to be from here. Never missing a traditional event like Mikey's Place 5K or the farmer's market or lights on Main or the Memorial Day parade. Laura appreciated the beauty and uniqueness of Old Weathersfield and all it has to offer with a particular fondness for Mikey's Place. Like many young parents in our community, Laura found Mikey's Place to be a networking hub, a spot to meet and gather with families. These romps often resulted in friendships and play dates for children and parents alike. It's an inviting place that Laura took full advantage of. So it became a natural space to design her memorial garden around. I have a unique interest in this location, being the art teacher at Hanmer School on the other end of Standish Park. A butterfly garden would provide numerous learning opportunities for our students with regards to scientific inquiries and observation of life cycles, as well as a lovely space for unplanar paintings or observational drawings. Laura would have loved this for her own students as she was a hands-on teacher who believed in project-based learning and often provided real life experiences for her class. If the sun was shining and if it was above freezing, Laura could be found in the late morning hours at Mikey's place with Millie, Josie, and baby William. If she hadn't packed a picnic, she would have followed up their playground visit with a cone from the creamery or a slice from village. She might stroll by the cove and visit the ducks by the warehouse. She was never on the sidelines as a parent. She was in every moment, digging in the sandbox, swinging on the swings, soaking in the sun with her head tipped back and a contented grin across her face. Laura would point out the birds, the clouds, or beautiful trees to her children. She especially loved spotting butterflies and considered them to be visitors from above. The breathtaking renderings of her garden provided tonight by Beta illustrate the way Laura saw the world. Without even knowing she had such limited time, Laura didn't waste any of it. She took in the world around her, wholly with intention, meaning, and presence. The serenity that this garden will provide reflects the inner peace Laura had because of her appreciation for life. Laura's garden is designed to serve all of our community in many different ways. Our hope is that you can see what an asset this will be for our town. So I'd now like to introduce my favorite uncle Najib to share our next steps as a foundation you finally got that right yeah <laughs> Becky, those are beautiful words thank you so for those of you who don't know me my name's Najib Habash and I'm in a bit of a unique spot for this project as I'm wearing two hats the first is as a principal at beta group and the second which in this case is more significant is that I'm also Laura's uncle. I can only imagine how happy and humbled Laura would be to see this beautiful garden that'll be built in her name. At the same time, I think she'd be so embarrassed at the fuss that's being made over her. If, she'd, if she could see tonight's presentation, she'd break out in her beautiful smile and then crack up laughing saying, you're doing all of this for me? <laughs> So we do have several steps ahead of us, and that's provided that we receive your approval. Our next step will be to seek town council's approval. While we seek their approval, we're going to continue raising what we need to build 
and maintain the garden. Recent efforts have included a bake sale at Highcrest that in just a few hours raised $900. Another effort is through an arrangement we've made with 1-800-Flowers that's going to donate a percentage of sales to the garden. On June the 6th, please mark your calendars, we're having a dinner with a silent and live auction at the Charles, complete with a celebrity host and a roaming sax player. And finally, a website has been set up, laurasgarden.org, through which donations are being received. I'd encourage each of you to peruse the website. Of course, donate if you'd like to, and we'd love to see you at the June 6th dinner. I'm very happy to share with you that our in-hand donations, along with some very generous private financial backing, allows us to begin building Laura's garden today. All we need are the required approvals. Thank you so much for listening to us. And we're very happy to answer questions that you might have. Can I say something, please? So um, I'm gonna try to do it without crying. Um, I'm Mary Diversa and this is my husband, Danny. And we are Mikey's parents, and we are the founders of Mikey's Place, and we can't support this enough. We know um, the joy that Mikey brought to us, and we had to share that joy with everyone else. So I know the feeling that you are all having now that you need to do something in honor of Laura. And before you know it, it's gonna be here. And I, I look back on it now when we just, when we talked about it and said, we have to do something for Mikey and uh, to benefit other children. And before we knew it, it was here and it took on a life of its own. And I know that that will happen for all of you and I wish it will, and I know it will. And we are just very honored that you have chosen Mikey's Place to have Laura's legacy live on. And I know that it's gonna be a beautiful addition. I was, um, I played in that park when I was a little girl and we are a Hamner family. So I know the emotion that goes into choosing where you want this memorial to go. There was no other place in my heart that would fit it. It had to be there. So I understand it and um, I applaud you all for doing it. And I know Laura is looking down along with Mikey and saying, let's do this guys, we can do this. So best of luck to all of you. And if there's anything that our family can do to help you with anything, all you have to do is ask. Thank you both. Thank you. Any board members have any comments, questions? Looks awesome. It's the most touching meeting I think we've ever had. Yeah, this is Suzanne Bargain. I'm sorry, I'm not, my video's not on, but as a old Weathersfield mom and a uh, parent at Hamner, this is gorgeous. And I'm so excited to have it in the community. So thank you for all your hard work on it. So Kathy, other than the board's support, I'm not sure if you need a vote from our end, but I'm not hearing any more comments and I can't, I can't imagine anybody's gonna have any issues with it. I think it's beautifully designed and certainly, uh, you know, it's a, it's a great spot for it. And I, I personally certainly support it. And I, Welcome any other board member comments or anything anybody wants to add. Just give us an idea of what we need to do from here, Kathy, on our end. Sure. Um, as as because it goes in a park, it and it's it's a request to be put in a park. It starts here at the park board, and the park board then gets to make a recommendation to the town council to accept the donation of this garden or whatever the project may be. So that's why the next step is the town council to um, 
to make sure that they're okay with the donation. And then it will go to um, our historic district because it is in the historic district and also planning and zoning. And I believe it goes to historic district first and then planning and zoning, but I'll double check that. But that's the, uh, that's the process for it. And then also uh, as staff, we'll be talking with our maintenance staff, the tree warden. We've had some preliminary conversations with them. And now we need to sit down and talk to them about some of the details and some of the little things that we'll have them look at the plan to see if they have any comments and concerns. And one of the things that our maintenance supervisor brought up to me was um, how close is the garden gonna be to the fence? Because do I have to mow back there or do, um, or do we, does the garden go close enough so you don't mow? So that wasn't something I even thought about. So those are the little details that they pick up because they wanna make sure from their end that it's gonna look good and we're gonna be able to keep it going. So I think that's, um, so those will be the things we'll do on our end uh, prior to going to council just to get everything all set. So really it would just need a motion from the board at this point that you would recommend um, that we make, that the park board recommends the acceptance of this donation to the town council. And Kathy, the, real quick, sorry. Mike, no, Kathy, I just wanna say, being intimately aware of the historic district's um, uh, regulations, they don't have to approve anything if it's under 18 inches. So I don't know what the height of the bench is going to be, but not that I think historic would not approve it, but um, I, it's 18 inches, I think, is their regulation if, if it's anything over that. But just as a side note. We could check with them, but they're very, um, they've always been very, um, wanted to always look at whatever park improvements we were doing to any of the parks in the historic district. Now, gotcha. I know Mikey's place is over 18 inches, but uh, <laughs> we did go to them for that. But we'll, we'll check with staff and find out if they need it, um, if they need us to go to them once we show them the plans. But we can check that out, Suzanne. Thank you. Yeah. What, what's, what's the intended time frame of when you want to get this built? I think if we had approvals right now, we, we'd put a shovel right in the ground. Okay, because I, I think you obviously you want to get if you're going to plant material, you're going to, you know, I don't know if you wanted to wait till the fall, but I <clears throat> just, I would, I would, I would hope that at least on the town side, I, you know, these approvals sometimes take some time, but I, you know, I, I think it hopefully could be expedited so you could meet your goal to get it in. I, th I think it's, it's well done. It's beautiful. It really is. So I, it sounds like from Kathy, we would we we would need a motion from the board to um, approve this to go forward. All the money is secured for the cost of this undertaking. We we have commitments for the full construction of the park. Oh. And do you want to mention? I believe you mentioned to me that you've set up a nonprofit organization. Yes. Uh, a nonprofit has been set up, a 501c3 called Laura's Garden Foundation. Donations that are made are, you know, tax, uh, what is it, tax deductible. Um, so, yes, we have established that. And I think the three board members are on this call right now Becky, Melissa, and Steve Jr. Can I just ask a question that followed up, Mike? Is that all right, Mike? Sure. Uh, first yep. of all, uh, what a wonderful way to honor Laura. What a, a, a great presentation you all did tonight and something I think that will benefit the community for generations. And certainly we will fast track it on the town council and I'm sure uh, we'll get the necessary approvals. But I wanted to follow up on Mike's question on the timetable. So assuming you get the necessary approvals, and I understand that you are shovel ready, ready to go, how long is the construction phase? Randy or Jay, would you like to make a, a comment on that? Yeah, I can speak a little bit to that. Um, 
there's a couple of critical path items for getting ordered, fabricated and delivered. So the, the granite really stands out as being probably one of the, those items. Uh, I would say that uh, in times that weren't impacted by COVID or other uh, world events, we'd probably be able to say that that lead time would be about uh, two months. Right now, it's probably more like four months or so. Uh, so one of the things that we, and we haven't as a group talked about this in any great detail at this point, um, I, I think one of the things that can be done is the um, sort of the getting the ground ready to do the improvements and then be able to put the benches in a little later. But I'll give you a sense of the time frame once the granite is in hand. It would probably take really um, maybe a month to put all the pieces together once you have all the materials. And that, it probably could be done a little quicker than that, but, um, it, but that's a general time frame that I think, you know, once all the materials are in hand, it would take about a month. Got it, thank you. Any other questions, comments? So I, I guess with that, I'll entertain a motion so we can move this forward. I'll make a motion that we uh, suggest to the town council that we got a thumbs up from us. Second, anybody? Second. I'll second it, Mary Frazier. Okay, so motion and a second. Any other further discussion? Hearing that, I think instead of raising hands because everybody gets stuck on those little yellow hands that don't seem to go down after. So we can just say aye, and I'm sure it'll be unanimous anyway. Aye. 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 You got it. Unanimous. Good job. <laughs> Thank you very and, much. And uh, Kathy, I, I would just ask if we could have just updates as this goes along so we can keep track of what's happening. Sure. Thank you. Best best way to get an update is to come to the June 6th dinner. <laughs> I got it on my calendar already. I got it written down. <laughs> Thank you how, all very, how, very how, much. How's, how's that being promoted? Is it on the website? How, how, do, how are people going to know about that? Actually, if you want, if you're able to visit the website, www.laurasgarden.org, um, and you become a friend, then you're essentially subscribing to any updates, notifications. So this is going to be our first real update for anyone who's subscribed so far. So this is actually very exciting. We get to send out our first blast email. Um, and then um, moving forward, we're looking into more social media, hopefully something in the rare reminder to reach our, you know, try to reach all the corners of town. So. Sounds great. Good luck. Thank you, everybody. Um, Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Bye bye. Good night. You. And you're Very welcome to stay. You're welcome to stay to hear somewhat of a <laughs> probably boring meeting compared to what you guys presented. So. <laughs> yeah, we'll pass. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Mary Good Dan, night, thanks. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Bye, Cass. Good night. Good night. We're going to be down to nobody, just us. I know. All the wrinkles will start showing now. <laughs> Your pictures. So we'll go back to the uh, back to the agenda. First item we had is uh, public comments, and I don't see anybody from the public. Kathy, you don't have anybody, right? Nobody else is anybody. here. Okay. Uh, next item is minutes of the January 28th meeting. Look for a motion on the minutes. And I just have, I just have to make a correction that I noticed today that it was actually the date was actually January 27th. Oh, I'm, okay. I must have just liked 28 better or something, mm -hmm. but. So the minutes themselves say 28 too. So that yeah, I've already okay. changed them on the website and everything. Gotcha. I'd like to make a motion to accept the minutes other than the incorrect date as read or printed. 
second. Was that Susan? Who, did, who seconded? I think it was Mary. Me, Mary. Mary Mahar. Okay. Thanks, Mary. So a motion and a second. Any um, comments? Hearing that, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. They're approved. Uh, monthly report, Kathy. Yeah, it's um, January is always a good month when we start planning and getting ready for the summer, which is always nice to think about. So, um, and all our winter session programs have been ongoing, except for snow cancellations. But other than that, um, things are looking good and staff have been doing a lot of planning for the summer and we're hoping to get back maybe to if normal exists, a good part of normal. The fishing derby, that's a good sign of spring coming too. So that's, that's, <laughs> that's good. So, any other questions from the board on the uh, monthly report? I just a, a silly question. I, for whatever reason, I um, everything, all my printed things are still at my office, and I tried printing right before the meeting, and the monthly report didn't didn't print. But did I understand right? There was a swim meet, a virtual swim meet. Did uh, two teams swim at different pools, and they showed it on Zoom or something? Yeah, actually, Rachel uh, oversaw all that. So, Rachel. It wasn't, there wasn't, um, a, it wasn't via Zoom. So we swam in our pool, uh, Enfield, Windsor swam in their pool. And then we just upload all the information into high tech, high tech to come say, okay, who actually won the hundred meter? Who won this one between the two teams? So because um, it was a very challenging year for swim teams in Connecticut. Um, I know that many places like Rocky Hill did not allow any meets to be held at their facility. I believe Glastonbury did participate in meets, um, but it was very difficult. So the agreement with swimming with this one town was that they could participate in a swim meet, but they literally could not be with other swimmers on their team. So, and that's how we actually did the championships. So for the entire league was, vir was virtual in putting information into the software to determine who won any of the particular races at their uh, respective locations. Wow. How, how, soon, how soon were the uh, results of each uh, event? A couple of hours later, co the coaches put it in immediately. So a lot yeah. of parents enjoyed not having to get in the car and travel an hour and a half to a swim meet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're in favor of more virtual swim meets going forward. So yeah, it was it, uh, uh, creativity was uh, flowing for sure, because they wanted the opportunity to, have to compete, but still keep all the kids safe at the same time. Nice, well done. Any other questions? Okay. And st staff have been in incredibly um, creative as we've gone through everything and just trying to make sure that the opportunity still exists. So that's one example of how it all played out. Good job. Uh, letters and announcements. I don't have anything. Okay. Old business. I know in the packet we had the, uh, the follow up on the Coke Park and there was a drawing included in that as well. So everybody should have that or should have had that um, with what Kathy sent out. <clears throat> Is there, are there much changes on this Kathy from what we had looked at before? Uh, no, I put this on. I put this on the agenda for a couple of reasons. Um, our engineering department gave me a, a very rough cost estimate for the project as you see it here now, and um, the the actual grass island is going to be approximately twenty thousand, and the wood what I'm calling the wood rail fence is going to be approximately fifty thousand. So I, I wanted A, to just bring that to your attention and um, also let you know that we've had requests from, um, well, actually we've shared the plan with two residents. Um, Steve Randall has gotten a copy of the plan and um, Captain Morgan, who um, runs the tour, it runs his boat down there for tours in the summer and also lives in the house that's the last house as you go into the park on Main Street. 
And um, so both of them came back with um, a number of comments that we're going to sit down with staff and our town engineer to go over some suggestions, some ideas. They like this, they like that, they wanted to look at traffic. So I just want to let the board know that we're beginning to, to get input and beginning to share the plan with people a little bit prior to going to the different boards and commissions. But I wanted to make sure you guys were in the loop just to know that we have gotten comments and we're going to be looking at all them. And they're, they're each, if I showed them to you, you got to appreciate, I don't know if you can see the, um, this is one person with all their comments in small print. So we have to go through it and um, kind of evaluate it and talk with the town engineer. Um, so, and both of them had some, some, some really good ideas to consider. So I think we're gonna look at all this, kind of do another draft, see if we're looking good and then begin the, um, the approval process. So I, I just wanna give you a heads up on where we are. Kathy, are the comments basically supportive of the project in general though? Um, sort of. They're a little mixed. Um, um, just some of it is, is, is more to deal with the traffic pattern and that's really our town engineer who's done that design. And, um, but some of them, but yeah, they're supportive. I would have to say they're supportive of the island. Um, they, um, they, one of them did like that we were gonna put a light on the pole one of them did, did ask that we look at whether or not we can put the, uh, um, the power line underground. Now the engineer has told me that because it floods all the time, that's probably not recommended, but he was gonna follow up with Eversource and see what they said. But he had, he had said initially that he didn't think so, but he will look into it. So we wanna make sure that we kind of look at everything It'd be great to have it underground, but I have no idea what that would cost to dig down and protect that line and however you do that. So that's something we have to, so it's, so they're good comments for us to look at and evaluate. Kathy, um, the uh, diagram, I wasn't able to print it again, uh, but the uh, fencing, is that, that's, is that on the island or where, where is the fencing going? Yeah, Tom, what we're looking to do, if you're familiar with the wood rail fence that goes kind of around the warehouse by the flagpole, yeah. it's that we'd like to do that type of fencing and put it down along the island, basically to prohibit cars from driving across. Yeah. And when we were discussing it today in the office, uh, one of the comments uh, that a resident had was, it'd be nice to put some gaps in the fence so people could walk through. But then as we talked about it, we don't really want them walking through into traffic. So those are the things we want to talk to our town engineer about. You know, maybe we put one gap in, but, but the, the fence would stop people. They would, they would make people walk the safe way as opposed to cutting through and going through traffic. Right. So that, those are the kind of comments that they, at least they make us stop and think what's the best way to do it. And really, we, we go to the town engineer for that because they and, do traffic and studies and designs all the time. And Kathy, refresh my memory on funding for this project. There's, there's money available now to proceed with it as far as the funding goes? Well, depending on the budget, we have money left over from the boat, lamp, boat ramp project that we've been waiting to determine how to do that island. So that's what it was intended for. Okay. And the goal would be as far as timetable, and I know there's an approval process, but construction, when, 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 when were we looking at construction? We're thinking the fall because in the spring, we can't, we can't determine whether or not it's going to flood. So we're thinking the fall. And so that's sort of our target. Because we don't want to interrupt the boating season in the summer. We might do late August, but again, it would depend once once we get through the approval process and go out to bid. Yeah, because there's real there's really not a, a lot of construction, so to speak. I mean, the biggest weight's probably going to be getting the utility company to bring that power line in. That usually have to wait quite a long time for them. That's probably the biggest delay on it. On it. 
Yep, so, so that's kind of what we're looking for. And we've been asked to really look at the area and look at ways to um, spruce it up. In my words, make it look pretty. But I have to remind everybody that it floods and we have to be careful what we put there. So we're looking at different things and what we can do down there. So it, we'll look at the whole big picture. Okay, any other questions from the board? Okay. Okay, new business. We had Laura's garden, we already did. Uh, budget discussion, 22-23, and that was a, um, some material on the packet as well. Yeah, the, the budget I, I sent to you today only because it was due yesterday, so. <laughs> was a little tight deadline. And um, what I tried um, to just give you, a, this right now is a working budget that'll, that'll start with the town manager. And we meet with the town manager in about another week and a half to go over at least what we're asking for. And really it's, it's, a, it's kind of a, a basic budget that um, identifies what some of the changes are over the over what were adopted for this year. And so I just identified at the bottom what some of the increases were and, and what they were. So Mike, however you'd like me to go over this or, or we could bring it back at the next meeting or if anybody, I, I don't know that you had a lot of time, but I would bring to your attention to a reminder that in this year's budget, in all in our part-time staff, um, the council used some um, federal funds, the rescue funds, for part of our, um, for part of paying for part of our part-time people this year. So they literally cut out of our part-time budget $157,000, but they're replacing it with ARPA funds. So it's not that we still did all the programs, but they were using a different funding source. And now that funding source will not be available for next year. So it, it shows a dramatic increase in our part-time budget because we have to make that up. Plus our favorite thing to talk about is minimum wage. And that has been going up a dollar each year. We're now at $14 on June 1st. July, I get 1st. July 1st. So it goes to $14 July 1st. And then in June of the same budget, uh, in June of next year's budget, it goes up to $15. So that's a big, that's a big increase for us and all our part-time staff. Because we also, we can't let the people who are part-time supervisors not get a raise. Otherwise um, there'll be too much compression with our salaries. So that's just something we have to take into consideration as we move forward and, and talk about our budget. Yeah, I, I, I noticed the notes in the bottom, Kathy, the smaller smaller font for the full-time staff, part-time stuff. So I'm, I'm glad you made note of that and to put that in there because going forward, somebody's not gonna know what happened to that stuff down the road. They're gonna, it won't look, it'll look a little funky in the budget. Yeah. So those numbers and notes all on the bottom, are those all referencing what fiscal year they're not they don't follow the necessarily follow the follow down right so they're all because it says like ARPA funds this year so I guess for oh. future we just reference so we know what year those notes are from if they're this year or going forward they're for next year okay they're for the the um the request for next year that's the increases over what we're currently budgeted for today gotcha and right now we're waiting on um information for utilities. Right now, we're just budgeting a 2% increase on utilities just, just to have a placeholder, but our finance department is working on that. So, and they'll, they'll make it consistent with what's going on in all the town budgets. Not the town budgets, but the department budgets. So I, I just had some questions and, and I'm willing to let somebody else go first before I rattle off mine. No, I guess I'll go. <laughs> um, the copy and binding, Kathy, there's there's zero zeros at what 
it shows no uh, nothing for adopted, nothing for requested. Is that? Yeah, that was one of the cuts we made um, last year, or well, for this year's budget, and we're absorbing it in other accounts. Okay. And support services. What remind me what those are? Sure. I have to look them up too because it's always. Um, That's a, a, a bunch of different things. It, we do, um, we have our early childhood collaborative where we partnership a staff member with the school department. So that's uh, in, in the current budget, that's $15,000 that we put in. The school district puts in 20, they've moved up to 20. So every year I keep asking for an additional 5,000 for that. Um, there's Red Cross aquatic fees in there. We have a driver license exam for our therapeutic recreation van. We do, we have, we have to pay for a license for all the music we use in our fitness classes and any place else we use it. And they keep going up, dri they drive us nuts. And uh, they made that up, the, the big national um, companies of the, that have the royalties for all the music. So we have to pay those. There's, um, there's funds in there for some of our community events and for our road races, we, we help uh, some of the local groups with some of the police costs. And there's, that's kind of a general overview I, of what's in there. No, I just, I, I think I probably asked the last year, I forgot what it was. Um, and the repair and maintenance, the equipment, is that to maintain the equipment that physical services uses to for for your stuff no that's strictly uh, it's a repair account for the community center and the solomon wells house so anything that needs to be replaced repaired uh it pays for the sonatrol alarm on the community center building uh we always have to hold a lot of money in the community center for the air conditioning unit because you know we've talked about how old it is so it's it, it's our money for our facilities Okay. And the capital outlay items at the bottom, um, what, what, what equipment are you looking at the 8,500 that's budgeted? That's strictly wood chips for the safety surfaces under playgrounds. Oh, that's okay. all we use it for unless something comes up. But nowadays when the playground equipment breaks, it's, it's more than this cost, but we try to uh, touch up all the wood chips under all the playgrounds in town, whether they do it in the fall prior to the start of school or in the spring after the winter. Okay, so that's in a capital outlay account? Yes. Okay. And, and the park improvement for the utilities, is that is that a project? That's for the Nature Center building for utilities. It's, it's just the uh, town's way of supporting the Nature Center operation by paying for the utilities. Okay. It doesn't quite was, cover it all. I was confused because I, I guess normally I wouldn't look at them as capital outlay. I look at capital outlay as more as a piece of equipment or a project. So I, I was thrown by the capital um, outlay. That's where that they told up. us to put it when we first talked yeah. about it. Okay. Any other questions or you just let me go through that myself to make me feel good tonight? <laughs> Anything, anything else you want to add to those and add to that, Kathy? It's, it's, it'll be a work in progress, really. Um, not sure, you know, where we'll be going with the budget. So, um, so it's a starting point. And then we'll see, because they usually update benefits and utilities. Um, and then if they're looking for cuts, then we begin that process. And they're always looking for cuts, so. Yeah, good luck. I know. Um, well, hearing no other comments, Solomon Wells House. I have nothing to report on it. Okay, uh, Keisha Farms, I know, um, I don't think we have any other update other than last time we met. 
No, I know Dan's been working on that report and he had asked me to get a, um, a cost for him for a, if you were to build a, uh, a synthetic turf field and if you were to build a um, grass field. So we were able to reach out to a landscape architect who actually did the synthetic turf replacement just recently at the high school. And he was able to give us some numbers for that. So Dan just was doing that as part of his report. Okay, uh, board member comments, anybody? I just have one, one comment. Um, I think that meeting went, the last meeting went well with the sports groups. I was just curious, was there any follow-up from them or anything from either end back and forth or everybody's kind of status quo? We're sort of, go ahead, Rachel. I was, I was just gonna say that I have coordinated a date for Alan from Alan Schiff from Physical Services and Little League to walk the fields together. So uh, that has been, I spoke to Alan and I spoke to Mark and decision was made that it would be beneficial for them to do it together instead of doing separate lists and doing that. So that will be happening uh, March 14th or 15th, depending on the snow which I'm sure will be all gone after tomorrow. <laughs> so, that, so that's so that been one of the, the follow-ups. And I, um, for from the last meeting, one of the things that was talked about. Okay, any other comments on that? No? Okay. No. Harbor management, I didn't see anything in there. And obviously I know things are kind of nothing's happening. So there's probably no report or no comments from them either. No, there's nothing going on. So I think the next item is probably Tom Malls. <laughs> I'll take that responsibility. I motion, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Okay. Two seconds. That means we really want to adjourn. <laughs> so, okay. Well, sounds good. Everybody enjoy the snow tomorrow. Good meeting. That was, um, that's quite a project. That was very impressive. They, that was a beautiful, very well designed. I got to say that, that that's going to be a very, very nice addition in that park. I, I'm with you on the irrigation though. That was the one thing that I thought of from the beginning that they may have good intentions now, but two, three years from now, it's just somebody's going to drop the ball and there's no turning back once those flowers start drying up or whatever. Yeah, and the new drip irrigation system, they don't use a lot of water. It doesn't sound yeah. like irrigating a, you know, a sod field or something. So I, I don't think there's going to be uh, much of an issue. So yeah, anyway. it's going to be a nice addition to the park for sure. Yeah, and yep. we've worked with them obviously prior to We've worked with them prior to obviously coming to the meeting and went over a lot of those points. And, um, and they came up with a nice design based on a lot of input. Okay. Looks good. Well, I think we're all set folks. Thank you again. Just, all right. Good night. All. Enjoy the weekend. Right. Happy right. shoveling. Stop the recording. The recording. All right, take care. Bye.